Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dear colleagues and friends, it's really an honor to be here with you. And uh, well, while looking to the screen, we can read here leading innovation. What means leading innovation? We need to try to get more information with our imaging techniques in order to help our patients. So with this in mind, I think that we need to forget about beautiful pictures and we need to try to get the most complete clinical picture that will make a difference in our decision making. So what is really new here and why is this relevant? We have just heard an excellent presentation. But what is really new here is that we are presenting the, let me say, latest advances in CT scan. This means the 320, that implies 640 slices per rotation and 7.2 centimeter gain to opening. So there is a high rotation speed, and this implies that uh, we will get excellent evaluation of our heart. Why is this relevant? Do we need that in our daily clinic? Well, in fact, it may, it allows us to analyze all type of cardiovascular patients. And it is really, really relevant, I will show you later. But also one of the problems with CT, or one of the concerns, was radiation. And it allows us to really examine our patients with a very low radiation. So let me also, just to show you very briefly, why this is important in terms of coverage. When we just have a look to this incredible, magnificent journey of CT scan, just coming from the, I started with the 16 detectors years ago, then moving to 64, now we are having a 320 detector in our hospital. And this is really relevant because in fact, this is translated to uh, what we can see from the heart in, in a very easy, fast, and simple way. So in fact, we can really analyze the complete, in a single rotation, the complete structure of the heart and therefore the complete structure of the coronary anatomy. Is this really relevant? Well, we can get the anatomical information very accurately and it is and very fast in all type of patients. And in fact, if we analyze in seconds how we can obtain this or, or how and how fast we can obtain this information, it will be really fast the way we obtain in a single cardiac bit all our information. Not only that, it's rotation. Remember in the last years in this Congress, always we were talking that we were concerned about radiation, exams with 15 millisieverts similar to the nuclear exams, but nowadays in, in our hospital it's quite hard to obtain an exam that more, with more than five millisieverts, and there are incredible results for other centers showing sub-millisievert uh, evaluations. I think that the definition of morphology with these CT scans no doubt is outstanding, but, and we can also analyze patients that we were not able to scan very recently. And now I am specifically mentioning two patients with atrial fib or extremely high heart rate. And don't forget that those patients, we have many of those in our cardiology department. In fact, with the new software, we can reject the arrhythmia problems and we can obtain excellent quality coronaries. We can also uh, analyze patients with uh, atrial fibrillation. This is a patient with tachycardia in our center. No problem in getting excellent morphological images of the coronaries. So this is the good news. The bad news is that coronary artery disease is a functional disease. It's not a morphological disease. So we do know that a patient with an 80% stenosis of a proximal LED behave absolutely different than another patient with 80% stenosis of LED. So I think that we need to combine the morphology or the excellent morphological aspect of CT scan with the functional 
the functional information that is provided by other technique as echocardiography. And in fact, this is the reality, and this could be an excellent combined approach to solve most of our que questions in patients with coronary artery disease. Is this really new? It's not really new. The attempts started years ago. What is really new is the top technology, is the leading innovation. So in fact, we have papers in 2005 published by a group of NAMDAR showing this uh, small subset of patients. The gold standard in this uh, um, study was PET plus invasive angio, and we can see the negative predictive value of 99% using the combined information. Later, Oliver uh, um, Gamperli uh, published in 2007, again, the hybrid system of SPECT plus CT scan, the fusion software, and it was the, comp the comparison between separate information of the technologies plus the combined information with a clear benefit of fusion of technologies. More recently, more than 300 patients, in fact, you can see that match findings were superior in terms of uh, uh, freedom of events when you combine the fusion of technologies. Also in the same year, low dose CT scan combined with adenosine stress perfusion MR showed clear advantage by using this combination of technology. Why then 3D echo and CT scan? No doubt, no doubt that 3D echo allows a complete examination of the cardiac morphology and function. But we cannot see, and was clearly nice, uh, nicely addressed in the previous talk, we cannot see the coronary arteries. CT scan, as I have shown you just now, low radiation, excellent definition of anatomy, no problems with arrhythmia, no problems with high heart rate. So we are, in fact, in the last year, we have started to combine these uh, technologies quite easy. We do the CT scan with any type of uh, CT, any vendor. We can also do the uh, 3D echo. We do it in our hospital with the Toshiba, and we combine with the software the information. Is it difficult? Well, let me just show you. You have seen very beautiful slides previously. Let me show you a step-by-step -step approach. So the first step is to merge the coronary CT and the ultrasound. We load individual DICOM data sets of the CT and the ultrasound. We set the image display that we want, and we match the CT and the, uh, uh, and the echo. So here in the CT scan, you can see that this uh, uh, axis is through the mid of the mitral valve toward the apex. And in, uh, we try to rotate and set the angle to any marker in our hands, the best marker that is easily recognized in CT and in echo is just in the interventricular septum between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Again, we do the same in the echo, and uh, we set the rotation axis to the same marker as in the CT. You do that manually. So uh, this is why I was telling you that uh, we do select the interventricular septum, right ventricle, left ventricle, because it's easy to find in both. And here you can see that, again, you can match. You can see what happens with echo, what happens with uh, CT, and you can be absolutely sure that you match in a, in a proper way. And then you select the display. It's just uh, uh, showing the superimposed images of the coronary arteries and the uh, left ventricle and uh, you can really analyze and rotate and see what happens with the uh, morphology of the anatomy, morphology of the uh, coronary arteries, and also you can analyze what happens in a visual way, you can analyze what happens with the uh, contractility of the left ventricle. And the polar map, what really represents is the different cardiac se segments with the coronaries, and you can here clearly visualize which segments are related to which coronary artery, because as you know, the coronary anatomy may change from patient to patient. You can analyze the torsion, the strain, the activation imaging, and what is also new, and we're working with that, is analyzing the LV mechanics 
of the left ventricle. I think that LV mechanics is a new insight into the LV performance. We need to uh, um, realize that ejection fraction is not enough in many of our patients. Is this relevant or only nice pictures? Well, let me show you this. This is a patient we recently did that in our hospital. This unclear chest pain in the emergency department. We have the CD320 CT scan in the emergency department, front door of the hospital. 600,000 population belong to that hospital. And, well, a typical chest pain, we did the CT scan, and there is a moderate stenosis there with calcium. What to do? What to do? Normal troponins, the patient came with chest pain, not sure. Well, in that case, um, uh, we did the fusion. We can see the uh, normal contractility of the left ventricle. And uh, here, we did the stress echo. And we sent superimpose the uh, coronaries with what could happen with a stress echo. Normal rest contractility, abnormal contractility that during stress that really match with that segment with a moderate stenosis, calcified stenosis in the CT scan. So in fact, just we match the perfect anatomy that was shown by CT scan with the functional information offered by the uh, stress echo. So easy to combine, not only at rest, but also during stress echo. And this is one example of a patient with an LED stenosis. We can match and we have a patient with a diagonal uh, occlusion, another a patient with a, a CXR circumflex stenosis. And we have seen, in fact, that it matched perfectly well with the different coronary artery stenosis. In fact, we can really analyze much better what happens in the coronaries and correlate to the specific segment in the echo. We can really uh, see the uh, coronary. We can just pinpoint what, where the segment that we want to analyze were matched with the um, contractility and with the LV. And no doubt that sometimes the polar map helps for the visual aspect of the uh, rapid location of the problem of our patient, and for sure analyzing the LV mechanics, as I said just now. So what may be also the future? Now we have combination, function, and morphology. Excellent news for our patients for the decision making, but maybe it will help also in CRT. I know groups are starting working on that. Maybe we will analyze, uh, easy to analyze what happens with the veins locating the veins just to better place the lead in the, uh, uh, re related to the activation of each segment. So in, in fact, or in conclusion, the message that I want to send you, dear colleagues, is that fusion CT and 3D echo is feasible, is easy, is easy to do it, and you obtain all the, date, all the data very fast. The good thing is that we combine morphology and function, and this is ex exactly what matters in coronary artery disease. It may help, we need more data. Uh, m uh, it may help in the decision making in patients with uh, CRT, stress echo, all these new indications may benefit from this fusion. No doubt that we need future research and more papers to clearly specify in which subset of patients will get more benefit. Thank you very much.